It's just beautiful. Um, how do you see your role as a college queen contributing to the HBCU community? So I think the biggest thing, I mean, you know, like HBCU pride has always like just been at least because like, my dad graduated from Howard. So like I, I kind of was, you know, brought up into that. Right. Just just this whole like big push for HBCUs, HBCUs. Um, and I think the biggest thing, at least that I'm learning still as Miss Felma today is understanding that like you have to change. Mm, you don't have to change, but basically like whatever's going on in the world, whatever's going on in your community, it's kind of your job to kind of pay up to that. Right. And, and to kind of cultivate and create your, your reign to kind of revolve around that. So even like I've noticed, you know, three of us had the honor in attending um, the Color Purple movie premiere in Los Angeles, California um, in early December. And uh, outside of just that amazing opportunity, we were able to meet other HBCU queens and courts. Um, it was so interesting, like, you know, going out to eat with them and stuff and having these conversations and just all of like the similarities that we experience mm -hmm. um, as HBCU royalty and stuff like that. But also understanding like we kind of have to keep up with the times, like whatever the previous court did is not going to look like what we do and whatever comes after us is not going to look like what we did kind of thing. So just being always like on your 10, right, like always on your pivot, mm -hmm. making sure that you understand not only what's going on at Spelman per se for us, but just an HBCU community as a whole. And then also too, just the black community as a whole. Um, that's kind of our job, like yes, to represent the institution, but also serve as a catalyst and inspiration for like younger black children, younger mm -hmm. black girls, younger black boys um, to understand that one, I can be that one day, but two, I can seek higher education one day as well. Um, and showing them kind of just what that looks like in different mediums. You don't have to be this straight A student. You don't have to be, you know, a part of every single organization. You can still be who you are um, and still kind of have a quote unquote place on the campus. So all of those things for sure. I absolutely love that. What was the platform that you ran on? So I ran, um, it's called Sunny with a Chance for Her, which was actually very, I think, like fitting. Um, when I was 16, <laughs> I founded a nonprofit called Chance for Her. And I not chance for her was basically an efforts to serve as like a mentorship kind of program um, mm -hmm. for young girls in the foster care systems in the D.C. metro area back where I'm from. But at the time, I was, you know, too young to interact with other youth because I, I myself was a child at the same time. So grew up, grew up, um, graduated high school. COVID happened. And that's when I got um, the nonprofit actually like, you know, everything like filled out and stuff like that for that um, and came to Spelman. And I wanted to implement Chance for Her into Spelman, just mm -hmm. in a different kind of way. So the platform name is Sunny with a Chance for Her. And essentially, it's kind of like with brighter days and all types of just light, right? There's a chance for her and, and whoever her is. And that's why the word is her, because she can look like and be like anybody. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we all, all three of us. And I love, you know, for Ayana and Nadia to share their platforms, too, because I think they're mm -hmm. very fitting to who we are as, as individuals. I love that. And go ahead, Miss Ayana. What was your platform? So I ran on a platform, the Spelman Renaissance. Um, and so similar to Indy, like very full circle, I was actually thinking about it yesterday. Like the Harlem Renaissance has always been my favorite, like just time period where black intellectuals, black artists are coming together and just creating this robust movement. Um, and, you know, I, I remember I did a project on that. I learned about Zora Neale Hurston. Here I am at Spelman studying anthropology. So it's just full circle. And so I wanted to bring, I wanted to Spelman have a renaissance. Um, me being a artist, um, there's things at Spelman that there were so many talented women at Spelman, but I wanted a place where these talented women can shine, can know each other, can speak their own renaissance and that they can have their own renaissance at Spelman. And then also the second part to that is that cultural aspect, you know, Spelman College, historically black, black institution. Obviously you have a bunch of smart African African American women at Spelman, but the girl next to you might be from Ghana. The girl behind you might be from Brazil. Um, the girl across the hall could be from Cuba. So I wanted to capture that as well. And once again, this place of knowing this and just celebration. So, you know, this this idea of art, culture, renaissance, and I want Spelman to have that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my platform. And like Andy said, it very much matches our personality and you can trace bits and pieces of the platforms from our childhood. Mm -hmm. it was very like very full circle, very full circle. I love that. It sounds like uh, Spelman is very pan-African. Um, there's women from all over the diaspora and yes. they come together um, and they all have different cultural differences and it's in, and it's in a, a beautiful gumbo. 
So, yeah. you, you know, to make the world go around. I love that. Miss Nadia, what was your platform? Uh, I read on the platform Curate Her with her standing for um, honoring your own unique journey, the E for embracing community, and the R for reaching your full academic and professional potential. Sure. And like it, <laughs> and like it, better. Said, those three points really encapsulated like the lessons that Spellman taught me up until the point where we started running. So that's what I felt Spellman had given me, and I wanted to give back to my other Spellman siblings, the people who are coming up behind me, and making sure that by the time um, they walk across that stage at graduation, they feel like they got everything out of Spelman that they possibly could. So by the time they go to grad school, law school, med school, into the workforce, like whatever they want to do, they feel like they are like fully prepared because Spelman gives us the tools, but you know, sometimes it's a little difficult to, to make use of the tools. So really like showing mm -hmm. them what's out there and how they can use their Spelman experience to the fullest. So when they graduate, you know, they're all good. So <laughs> I love that when I was talking to Miss PV, we were uh, ex uh, exploring how sometimes students don't utilize career services, you know, or or just the different, like you said, resources that are available on campus to them. Maybe they don't know, maybe they're not aware, maybe they're too shy, or maybe they don't think it's gonna work for them. So I'm glad you uh, ran a platform to say, hey, utilize these tools that are here. Like get everything out of here. Your mm -hmm. tuition and fee money, get get it out of here. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I love that. Circling back to you, uh, Miss Spellman, you talked about you created Chance, uh, Chance for Her. Yes, ma'am. And you said you started it as a team for Foster? Yes, yes, ma'am. Why was yeah, Foster? I'm sorry. I'm so glad. Go ahead. I was saying, why was foster care so near and dear to you? Um, so I, I think like full transparency, I think it was just growing up, right? And and understanding that I was given a lot of opportunities that the people that I went to school with were not. Mm -hmm. Um I went to a public school, predominantly uh, black and, and Hispanic public school um, for elementary school and then middle school, um, same same kind of thing. And at, at my middle school, there was 1500 kids, but only two grades. And I would have about like, you know, 40, 50 kids in my class and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And I was, you know, always like, I guess, very book smart at the time. Um, but just from a watching everybody else grow up and watching the different things everybody else was kind of getting into and doing and stuff like that. Yes. I was very, you know, like blessed to have the upbringing that I have at the same time. It, it, it bothered me. It, it bothered me that like, we, we go to the same school, we sit in the same class, we sit in the same cafeteria and you got to go home to, to something different than I do. And whatever mm -hmm. you're going home to has the potential to hinder you as a, as, as a person, because you're still a child. Right. Mm -hmm. So just, with that right and and just channeling that and obviously too like you know your your own personal life experiences will kind of shape that but that was the biggest thing um it was finding spaces that are currently you know existing or whatever that house or that hold children who are in these predicaments that are in these situations um and at 16 which is i guess kind of relatively young to even be having like that mindset because the, the idea didn't start at 16. i mm -hmm. started it um not started it, but I started just the wheel started turning when I was mm -hmm. in elementary school. So much so to where I made T-shirts for my whole class, and it said, "Don't be a bully, be a friend." I will, I will never forget it. I will never forget it. Oh my goodness! Wow, um, <laughs> no, it, just, it just brought back a memory. But yeah, I I just have always just saw myself and in, in a lot of other people, and, and understood that like we all just want to be seen, right? Like we all just want to be seen for exactly who we are, kind of thing. So. That's definitely what sparked um, the foster care system. I think when I came to Atlanta, though, I understood that you didn't have to be so specific, right? Like that mm -hmm. you can touch other people and do kind of the same type of work um, just through different mediums. So I think that's then like where the whole like drive for like community service and stuff like that kind of came from before even being Miss Bowman College. So yes. it, it, it was in you. It was oh, yeah. In you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to my mother, because she, yeah, she instilled all of that in me. Absolutely. Hey, mama. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So in what ways do you all, all three of you, connect with and support your fellow students at your HBCU? You want to go, Yana? Yeah, I can start. I would say at its very essence, just being authentic. Mm -hmm. um, something that our advisor always tells us is, you know, you don't have to fit the crown, the crown fits you, the crown is adjustable. And I think we're all like great examples of that. I think 
like I said, connecting first and foremost, just being authentic, talking to